Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Harvest Horror Fest. Are you ready to get infected with virus? That was lame. That was lame, huh, Matt? No, actually, I kind of liked it. You were doing well. Because you can't say the virus. You can't say a virus. It has to be just virus because that's the title of the film. But no, Mike, I liked it. It was a good attempt. I think it was one of the better ones of this season. All right. Well, as you heard on the other side, uh, that is Matt, and I am Mike Talent, and this is Real Film Nerds, episode 346. And this is also the uh, fourth entry into our Harvest... uh, Oh, shoot. Um, Sixth annual Harvest Horror Fest, Mike. Yes, yes. Sixth annual Harvest Horror Fest. Um, And the movie is... uh, Well, Matt Matt will tell us all about the movie here in a second. Uh, But how are you doing today, Matt? Oh, fucking miserable as always. Although, my Diamondbacks did win. So those of you who are listening to this in the future... Uh, they at least won game six. So that's the day we're recording where he forced a game seven tomorrow against the Phillies. We're still alive, Mike. We might go to the world series. It's going to be fucking tits. Already looked up tickets. Nosebleeds are $350 for tickets to the game, to a world series. I'm seriously thinking about selling a car to go to the fucking world series, but I don't think it'll happen. Wow, dude. Wow. Well, I, I, I mean, it would be exciting to see the Diamondbacks make it to the world series When's the last time they were in it, Matt? 2001, baby. The youngest, uh, not the, yeah, I guess you'd say the youngest. The quickest a Major League Baseball team has ever won the World Series was the Arizona Diamondbacks in 2001. We were three years old. Okay, all right. Well, um, I'll bring it back around, Matt. So uh, I think before we start talking about this movie, why don't you give us the good rundown? Woo! Mike, you got it this week. You were anticipating it. Oh, see, that you ruined it. He just looked at notes. He wrote it down. That's why. He's a cheater. Cheater? Man, come on. I'm allowed to have some notes. Yes, sir, you are. You're allowed to have notes. I know the English and the languages and the talking and the words are not your natural ability like mine. You're more of an analytical mind, but you do know how to talk quite well, Mike, for being so analytical. So anyways, all right. This week, we are talking about actually my suggested film, and Mike went along with it. We will get into that discussion later, because I'm curious if Mike remembers seeing it or not, but we'll get there in a minute. This week, it's 1999's Virus. It is rated R as an hour and 39 minutes long. It was directed by John Bruno, and it was written by Chuck Farrer. I don't know. There's way too many R's in that fucking last name. And Dennis Feldman. I got that one. Uh, What a cast. 1999. Clearly, they spent a lot of money on these motherfuckers. Jamie Lee Curtis, my good friend. Billy Baldwin, a.k.a. William Baldwin. Donald Sutherland. Marshall Bell. Sherman Augustus. Cliff Curtis. And Keith Flippin. All right, let me go back to the IMDb page so I know what I'm reading here. Oh, look, my internet's working quick. All right, here we go. After outrunning a typhoon at sea, a strong-willed tugboat navigator and her crew discover a high-tech alien life form that's taking control of a Russian research vessel and aims to destroy on a massive scale. How's that breakdown for you there, Mike? Dude, I loved it. I loved it. He did a great job, Matt. Only from your tutelage, sir. All right, Matt. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to give you my first impressions. Hold on, hold on. I want to know, Mike, have you seen this movie before? Because you were not sure if you had seen it or not before. So have you seen this movie before now or not? No, I have not. Oh, so I was right. You have never seen this movie. I cannot believe you didn't see this. This was a pretty big budget film back in 99. Yeah, it was, dude. Yeah, it was. $75 million. Oh, yeah. And most of that went to Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Sutherland. No, I don't know. I don't know. No, okay, I Mike, think go, it, go I went ahead. To What's special your first effects, impression? Man. Um, so this is not a great movie, but it is It is pretty entertaining because it's just ridiculous. Um, 
it's a little bit slow to get going, but once we start to see our, um, I don't know, I don't really want to spoil it, man. I, I mean, uh, is it a spoiler? Once about, we start to see the bad guys. Okay, about the alien? Yeah. Because it talks about the alien in the synopsis. You can talk about that. Yeah, once we start to see the alien, I really thought it, it started to shine. Okay, okay. So, Mike, I like this movie. I like this movie a lot. This is a fun, goofy, over-the-top movie that has absolutely incredible real life um uh what what's the word i'm looking for huh practical effects practical effects there you go like the the robotics are all legit like the gore is all legit there's only one where it's not and it's towards the end and we can talk about that later that was clearly uh not the greatest cgi by today's standards but all the practical effects were absolutely amazing in this movie i thought i'm pretty sure that's where the whole budget went because i mean they looked great for 1999 dude come on no no dude the 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 practical effects for the aliens was awesome um i i will try not to get into the spoilers but i i remember the ending differently than what happened uh so clearly i don't even remember this to the best of specs but we'll get to that later because i thought only a certain person survived not multiple people but whatever um yeah it, it's it's quite an interesting movie for the cast that they got i'm not sure exactly if this just read better or like exactly how did some people sign on to this like i don't know matt if you were if you were um one of these bigger bigger named actors would you be like i want to do this movie or would you have rejected it if i was donald sutherland or if i was jamie lee curtis uh donald sutherland okay if i was donald sutherland i'd be like hell yeah because donald sutherland is all about doing different unique roles where he can kind of dive into them i mean that's his career He's always built his career on doing very, very different roles. And in my opinion, this is one of them. He plays kind of a villain. He plays a selfish tugboat captain. And the guy, all he cares about is money and greed. And he pays for it. How's that? That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, dude. That was a nice way. Well, okay. So uh, I guess just circle back around if you're Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, probably not because Halloween is a much better horror movie than this. And her character is kind of flat in this, in my opinion. Um, she's the main, well, I mean, they're all kind of equal about the four or five of them are about equal, except for good old Billy. Billy Baldwin is, you know, billed as one of the main people and he's just kind of lackluster. And there's like a little bit of a love interest between him and Jamie Lee Curtis. And I just don't understand why she's on a tugboat at all. Uh, you know, most seamen are men, but, uh, Hey, you know, whatever it is, what it is. I just, I don't think it was the right fit for her. I honestly, I don't think they should have, she should have just done another Halloween remake. Well, uh, funny you're talking about that, Matt. I don't think this is a spoiler, but, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis wanted to have the director fired of this movie and have, um, the guy who did Halloween H2O do it uh but he was busy uh filming i think dawson's creek god dude halloween h2o was fucking horrible you remember watching that together yeah dude i do we've uh, talked about that in the past we watched it at r&m cinema yeah and they played cartoons that was the one where they played cartoons before it right yeah it was so fucking short they played 20 minutes of cartoons just to keep us there longer yeah it was funny it was so lame. God, that movie was so bad. But that Ugh. was back in that that was back in the good old days of uh, you know, it's rated R, it's rated whatever. Uh is your mo- do you have money? Okay. Here's your ticket. Well, I think you and I got away with it, spoiler alert, but I think you and I got away with going into rated R movies at a young age because we're so tall. Oh, maybe, maybe. Like but- a lot of people because you're listening to us on a podcast, so you don't know our physical features, which is on purpose. But uh, yeah, I am a giant. I am six foot four, and Mike is over six feet. 
So we both are quite tall individuals, and we were quite tall individuals in high school. So they probably were like, ah, oh, no, they're definitely 18. Fuck them. Or they were just like, money? Okay, cool. Come on in. I felt One like it was two. money, dude. Because like, I was watching rated R movies like when, I don't know, like in middle school, dude. I remember riding my bi- bicycle to Uptown Theater to watch um, like Forrest, well, no, Forrest Gump was PG-13. Yeah, that's not rated R. No, right. no, um... Unforgiven? No, I watched that with my dad. No, there was another movie I watched that was like like 90s and it was rated R. And like my parents are like, you watched that? I'm like, yeah, but it was really good. Oh, Braveheart. Uptown. I, w- I went and watched Braveheart like in middle school, I think. And uh, I told my parents to go watch it. And they were like, oh, that was awesome. They let you in? Mike, was that your first rated R movie ever? Oh, absolutely not. But that was one of the. I just remembered going to it, um, and I told my parents to go see it. See that there's the connection. So my parents didn't go watch movies that much until I told them to go watch. Like I told them to go watch Forrest Gump. Now, what was your first rated R movie then? Man, it was probably Chucky, and it was probably when I was five years old because my cousins made me watch it. Oh, well, that's just traumatizing. Like rated R movie by choice. How's that? Uh, I don't know, man. Um. It might be Terminator 2 Judgment Day on a bootleg copy over at a buddy's house. Okay, so I know for a fact mine was Terminator 2 Judgment Day. We were not friends then yet. Uh, No, actually, we might have been friends because that would have been 92, but I wasn't in the same school as you yet. And so I went and watched Terminator 2 Judgment Day with my buddy Davis, who I don't even talk to anymore. I don't even know if he's still alive. But we went to r and Cinema. We paid for uh, whatever movie we told his parents we were going to see, and they dropped us off. We paid for it, walked in, and walked straight into Ter- Terminator 2 and sat down. Nice, dude. Watched the whole fucking thing. It was great. No, uh, Terminator 2 was like, I saw it on a bootleg copy, I think when it was still in theaters. And even though it was not the best uh, quality, like I got the gist, and it was like, it was like earth shattering to watch it. I was like, whoa, dude. So good. I can't, you know, that's one that I, I think I own it on 4k. I'm not sure, but I bought it two or three different times on DVD because they kept coming out with different versions. You remember, you remember you saw my collection. I know you saw the one I got one. It was called like the super ultimate, uh, like cyborg edition or some shit. And it's like this aluminum metal case. Yeah, the case was awesome. Yeah, I still have it. And it has the regular original theatrical cut. It has the director's cut. And then it has like the super ultimate director's cut, which adds like an hour to it. And I mean, there's whole fucking scenes. Like there's a 20 minute scene of them cracking open Schwarzenegger's head and pulling out the chip and reprogramming it and doing all this shit that was not in even the director's cut. It was pretty wild. Wow. You know, I mean, they got to film a lot of stuff and then I guess they kind of feel how it flows together and then, you know, what kind of runtime they're going and all kinds of stuff, you know, pacing and all that. Yeah, dude. Terminator 2 is, in my opinion, one of my top 10, possibly top five films ever made. It's just phenomenal. Anyways, okay, we're not here to talk about Terminator 2, Mike. We're here to talk about the virus. But uh, I don't know. All this talking, I'm quite thirsty. Ah, yes, yes. I imagine you are, Matt. So with that, I'm going to ask you, what are you drinking this fine evening, morning, or afternoon? (sighs) I don't mean to be a broken record, Mike, but this is four weeks in a row, and I have 12 beers from our good friend, Real Film Nerds super fan, Eric. I'm drinking another delightful Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Although, not to not to let you jump in yet. One thing I found interesting is I have not been able to get Sam Adams Oktoberfest on a tap until now. It took halfway through October to finally get it, and I've had a 12-pack of it for a month. Wow. Wow, that is interesting, man. Um, so for once, we kind of have the same thing. So I have a Sam Adams, but it is a Sam Adams pumpkin, and it's called Sam Adams Jacko, and it is great. I don't know, dude. Is it the same as last year? Because I got one of the ones last year. It was way too pumpkin-y for me. It was very cinnamony and ugh. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. 
So yes, it's like last year. It's so sweet. It's ridiculous. So anyways, well, Mike, on to the most reviled question of the podcast. Mike, what is this week's just incredible dad jokes? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. Now, all right, Matt. You're going to love this one. Why do t- cafeteria clocks run slow? Um, so that I eat more pizza? They always go back four seconds. Ha! Oh, that's bad. That was, that was a definite dad joke for sure. And for those of you who are listening, that was out of the book. Mike, I'm proud of you. But you will be getting another book soon. All right. Well, here we go. Um, the most important question of the podcast next to the most reviled. But this one's probably fairly easy. I don't know, Mike. I hope it's easy for you. But uh, how does 1999's virus relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, Matt. So um, this one took me a minute to figure out, but the makeup department uh, had me um, saved. And for this uh, MCU tie-in, we're going with uh, Joel Harlow. He's a special effects makeup artist. And he worked on um, Black Panther, uh, Wakanda Forever. Uh, And he also worked on... Let's see, there's a a few. um, Black Panther. Yeah. Yep, I think that's it for him. So, um, yeah, this is a good one. I was, I was a little worried about it, Matt. I, our main characters, no one really was in, uh, MCU, but it was makeup department saved me. Honestly, dude, I'm kind of shocked. I thought Cliff Curtis was in the MCU, but he, he's well known, but he's always played kind of like lesser parts. So that's why I was thinking he was probably in there, but nope, you're right. I'm not finding anybody out of our main characters. Yeah, or no. I, I looked at Cliff Curtis. I thought he was in it too, but he's he's he wasn't. He he's in all kinds of movies, but it's just he's not in. Like he was the most recognizable. Although I was like, he's kind of typecast as like the Samoan dude. He is, but he's he's not a Samoan. What is he? He's Kiwi. Oh, all right. Now, what's know. really funny? <laughs> You you know what he plays in uh, um, one of your favorite movies of uh, all time, Mike. Um, oh gosh, which which movie is that? Oh, I, of course, I'm drawing a freaking blank. It's uh, why am I why am I being so stupid? Um, he's in Avatar, uh, Denzel Washington, uh, Training Day. Oh, Training Day. Um, God, I hate getting old. How dare you let me get old, life? Oh, uh, yeah, dude. Uh, happy early birthday. I know. I, I know it's tomorrow. If you're listening to this, it was yesterday. <laughs> but he was in a, a Bring Out the Dead, Training Day, Collateral Damage, uh, Traffic. I mean, he's in a lot of huge movies. But uh, Training Day, he played a gangster, a Mexican gangster, and he's a New Zealander. <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever. It's just, I I mean, get it while you can, my friend. Get it while you can, you know. But it was just so funny to hear him trying to speak with, like, a Mexican accent. It was funny. Sorry. I just, not to get off topic. Anyways, okay, Mike. So are we in the spoiler section now? Can you spoil virus? And tell yes, me I think so, dude. What you let's, did or didn't like about it? Yeah, dude. Let, let, let's go. Let's spoil it. So, uh, okay, the part I was alluding to earlier was at the end with the giant robot Cronenberg yeah, monster the thing, part. yeah, the CGI looks it's terrible. Yeah, it does. Other other than that, the the special effects look fantastic throughout the entire film. They do. Um, it was impressive, Matt. Like I was actually like, wow, these like creature things were really cool. Like I like the part where like the skull popped out of the dude and like jumped up at him. 
Oh yeah, that like, was fucking crazy, right? Yeah. That dude, that was awesome. Like there's there's some really cool stuff in this and I was like, "Well, I know where the bu- uh, the budget went." Well, and um, did you realize okay, so there's the one where the Robert Everton, our captain goes in and he's asking who the more powerful life form is is Everton. And the other guy's body is lying on the ground, not on the ground, on the table. Um, I'm forgetting the name of that actor. He's pretty well known too. He's been a bunch of shit too. But um, they they don't even like mess with like Donald Sutherland's body. They just like pull his head off and stick it on <laughs> that other body. And it was like four other bodies put together. Like that really shows you how jacked up like uh, this was. I mean, they're literally like building these monsters out of people and robotics. I mean, it's it's messed up. Although, yeah. do you know what's more messed up, Mike? Uh, what's more messed up? Being uh, William Baldwin or Billy Baldwin and being called Steve in the entire film. The Baldwin <laughs> nobody likes. <laughs> I guess that's true. Um, so, Matt, th- this has a really funky... Like, part of the reason I like this movie, Matt, is really weird. So, the ship that they go and board that has the, like, the Russian ship or whatever? Yes. Was actually the, uh, let's see, I don't, I don't know what FS stands for. US, USA FS Hoyt S. Vandenberg? You mean um, it's not a Russian ship, Mike? No, but. God, but, what so, a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> so so anyway anyway Matt this was filmed on that ship. Well that ship they turned into an artificial reef and sunk it in Key West. Oh dude that's I, cool. Which I have dove. You I have dove, dove that, that actual ship. ship? Yeah. I know you've done a lot of wreck dives down there and stuff but dude you dove that actual ship. Yeah and it looked awesome dude. All those dishes and stuff were still there when I went cuz it was like I guess it was fresh. I think I went in 2010 or 2011, and it was sunk on uh, May 27th, 2009. Jeez, dude! So, where's your where's your GoPro footage from that? Uh, I have it. We'll put it on realfilmers.com. <laughs> <laughs> dude, but uh, dude, it was so cool just to see it. I was like, oh, dude, I I dove that ship. That's this is so weird. Did you recognize it like immediately before you dove it? I mean, when it came on. Sorry. Did you recognize it immediately when it came on screen, or did you look it up later? Well, I I, I thought I was like that looks like, and then I I started uh, looking at the trivia and, sh- yep, there it is. The ship was used, uh, like uh, it was it was uh, decommissioned since the mid eighties and mothballed on the, uh, in Virginia, and then in two thousand nine they sank it off off of Key West. Dude, that's crazy. When was the last time you went diving? How old's Flynn? <laughs> Four years. God. Yeah. Has it really yeah. been soon to be five? Man. Uh, f- well, yeah, yeah. Four. Four. He's going to be four in, in March. He's going to be four. I oh, thought he was four. In February. He's, he's going to actually be one in, in February. Oh, see, I thought he was five in February. My no, math no, no. is off. No, no. Well, well. First off, he, yes, I know he was born on leap year. Yeah. So, so his first real birthday is coming up. Well, then, are you gonna are you gonna mess with him <laughs> and only give him a one? <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna hold him back too, so he can't go to school for a couple more years? I don't know, dude. He would be like twenty by the time he could go to preschool or kindergarten. <laughs> Yes, he would be quite old if we held him to his uh, true uh, calendar birthdays. I like it. I think you should. Okay, so yeah, but so Mike, diving a actual piece of Hollywood history. <laughs> did that bring this up a whole reel, dude? I don't know. It, it could have. It could have. Wow. So why didn't you like it? You said it was just okay. I think it's great. I think it's a lot of fun. I don't know, man. It's it to me. It was real slow getting going, and like it was kind of a weird story. Um, I like that it's all out to sea. Um, like the they they didn't really need a storm, but I guess the storm was the way that they found the ship. 
Yeah, but it's like, been stuck I, in the center of the storm for a while. Yeah, I, I feel like you didn't need that storm at all, but, like, I guess it, it added a little bit. Because, like, then later on in the movie, they get out of the eye of the storm, and then, like, they're supposed to be... It was kind of funny, Matt. They're supposed to be in the hurricane or typhoon, and... uh like for the first few scenes after that, it has like a little bit of like you know the ships rocking back and forth, right? And then it stops, hmm. and then it's fine. The ship is fine. They did say the ship changed course. Maybe that meant that, like because they said they needed to go uh, into the wind, and like they said it it altered its course because you know the the robots were in control. But like I don't know. I still feel like it'd be a little bit of like it's it's still a typhoon. It's not like uh oh, you know, if we just go into the waves we'll be fine. Yeah, no, it'd be going for a while, yeah. But Mike, I, I don't know how this isn't like a immediate five out of five for you because think about it. It's a horror movie, it's a sci fi movie, two things you love. It's a ship you dove, like physically dove. It has the mirror space station. It has aliens. Dude, this movie literally has everything in life you love other than your family. It it does have all those things. That is that is pretty I mean it has aliens it kind of and like yeah. Um but you know what it doesn't have? Uh-oh. Three bees. It doesn't have boobies. No. No boobies. Blood and beast. Yeah, it it doesn't even you don't even get like a hint. Like the the Russian chick, I'm forgetting the actress's name. She's not actually Russian. Uh Joanna Pacul, she's yeah. quite attractive, and you never see her or Jamie Lee Curtis, who was probably fresh off of True Lies or something else, or you know H two or whatever. She was looking good too. They never have any form fitting clothes whatsoever, let alone like like scandalous clothing. Like it's not e- they're not even form fitting. Like it's truly nineties. Like it's really baggy on both of them. Yeah, and well, both of them, like, they're the only females, I think, because even on the Russian crew, as far as we could tell, like, all the dead bodies, boy, were there a lot of them, uh, they're all men. Yeah, it had a crew of, what, over a thousand, right? Uh, I don't know if it was a crew of a thousand. It was a lot, though, because I remember they walked up on the ship, and they're like, where is everybody, like, dead or deserted, or, yeah, um, abandoned ship. Was it like four hundred? I don't know. They said it in the movie how much crew there was. They did, but it it was like it was like a lot. It was like a hundred and eighty or something. Yeah, it was it was it was bigger than a bread box. That's how many crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Mike. So, um, what are we going to talk about next week? So for next week, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the final Harvest Horror Fest with Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, Looks pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, I know everybody was thinking that we were going to re- uh, review uh, Taylor Swift's era tour because you know that's pretty scary. But no, we're 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 not doing that. Like we're we're skipping that. Um, you know. Uh, but uh, Five Nights at Freddy's looks interesting, dude. I I have no idea what it's about, but I know it's a video game. Um, and in fact, uh, back to Virus real quick. Virus was uh, Dark Horse Productions. It was based on a comic book, I guess. Uh, I know it said Dark Horse Productions, but I wasn't sure if it was related to a comic or not. Yeah, I, I think when I was looking in the trivia, it did say it was something about um, related to like a comic book. Because, hmm. yeah, Dark Horse is what a not one of the big publishers. They're one of the bigger publishers. They're like... They're not as big as Marvel and DC. They're like like fourth or fifth kind of level, but they're still pretty big compared to like most of the independents. Like even like Image and stuff, they're still pretty big. But yeah, yeah Mike, this will make five Harvest Horror Fest podcasts this year, and that's more than a month, Mike. You know, because I mean, it's coming out on Wednesday, November first. It, it it is coming out, but it's all because of Tay Tay, right? Like she forced everything all around. Yeah, dude, she screwed the pooch on the thirteenth. She really did. Yeah, and she's they're making that money, dude. They're making that cheddar. Did you see what they did for the prices too, man? Oh, this is such a strange release, Matt, with the 
they went AMC is in charge of uh distributing the movie, so they cut out the studios. Right. And they're only playing it Thursday through Sunday, but they have higher ticket prices. So it's uh it's nineteen eighty nine for adult tickets. And if you're a Taylor Swift fan, that makes sense to you. And then it's thirteen thirteen for children's tickets. Also, if you're a Taylor Swift fan, that makes sense to you. Um. Wow, dude! I hope this isn't the start of a trend on how much it costs to go see a movie. I mean, holy shit, twenty bucks! Doesn't yeah, she well, have enough fucking money, dude? She makes like a billion dollars every tour. Uh well, she, she she's making a lot this time, but. That their think thinking was, um, they wanted more people in the theaters when the the movie was showing because it's more of a, it's an event. Ex, yeah, it's an event and it's experience. So they thought if they raised the prices and had it only in theaters for a few days and not on the other days, they could kind of balance it out. And whether that happens or not, it I guess it doesn't really matter because. It's already made over a hundred million dollars in America, and uh, likely will make more. You know, over that, I think it already has made over that in in foreign markets too. So like, it's it's killing it, dude. Like, I guess when when you're hot, Matt, you're hot, and you might as well take advantage of it. Uh, I don't know what that's like, Mike. I've never been hot in my life. You have been, but not me. Not that I'm one to judge, but. Yeah, I get hot when it's hot outside. Yep. Um I just I don't know, dude. I don't know if this is good or bad for the theaters with Tay Tay and all that shit. Well, I guarantee there's gonna be lots of copycats. I don't know if it's going to actually work. Like she's got such a fan base that I don't know if you could pull this off every like I heard I think I heard Beyonce's going to try and do this with her tour. Yeah, I did hear about and, that. Yeah. And I think I think that would work for her too. So she's got a large fan base. So I think some some groups could do it, you know? Like if Metallica wanted to do uh their current tour, like they could probably do do it. Well, and know? they might they might because they did shoot every single show with super high production shit i mean it was wild dude watching it they literally had all these booms set up with you know the cameras on a string oh yeah that shit was just going wild dude because the members are all over the circle it was pretty pretty wild to watch it really was okay well i mean maybe they will maybe they won't i don't know like it's it's hard it's hard to say but um I don't know if it's going to be a trend. I know the theaters are hurting, so they're they're happy to have some of the like they're happy to have like a good October. Well, so and Mike wasn't Christopher Nolan involved with Tay Tay's film too? Uh, I don't know if he was, I, uh, I thought, but it wouldn't surprise me. I thought you he know? was. You get you get the best. I think he might have. I don't know if directing is the right word, or if he produced it, or if he cut it up or what but i i, I swore i th- heard christopher nolan's name wrapped in on it and that's why it's like shot and like put together like so well because not just the 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 music but i've heard a lot of really positives on how well the film itself was done yeah i'm i'm looking right now on the stuff i don't see anything with his name on it but doesn't mean he wasn't part of it mm. I, I swear I heard something, but I don't know. I, I, I catch, you know, uh, I watch a little bit of news in the morning if I can, uh, and I heard something about it, but I could be mistaken. I don't know. So, okay, Mike, next week, five nights at Freddy's. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, you might have to do some research on the video game before you go and uh, watch the movie, Mike. Yeah, I, I'll definitely try and do that for sure. But... um. Yeah, so other than that, uh, we still got to figure out what we're going to do after Harvest Horror Fest. I have a feeling we'll probably be watching that new Martin Scorsese film, even though it's going to be like two weeks old by then. Yeah, but Matt, I was looking at the the new movies that are coming out, and I, I don't I don't think there'll be that much to choose from. So I I think the new Martin Scorsese movie will be will be quite good to watch. The was it Flowers on the 
something, right? Uh, Killer Killers of the Flower Moon. Right. Yes. And it it looks really good. Typical Martin Scorsese, Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, yeah, we'll talk we'll talk about it when we're done with the podcast. But Mike, is there anything else you want to add about? Well, you're the one that runs this damn show. Is your show right now? But I will just take over. Mike, anything else you want to add about Virus before we give our ratings? Uh nope, nope. I think I'm good. I had I I did have a good time once the once the aliens and the creatures were revealed I, I started to enjoy it a lot more oh i i do want to mention matt did you ever see that tom Selleck movie with uh the robots and stuff tom Selleck movie with robots i would have thought i would have remembered that i've seen a lot of tom Selleck movies because my mom has a massive crush on him but it's not ringing a bell hold on i'm gonna find i'm gonna find out the name real quick matt oh Quick, dude, to the internet, dude. I think, I think, I think we need to add this to next year's. Well, put it on your list. You're the you're the man in charge. It'll be lucky yeah. number seven next year. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh, Runaway. That's what it's called. 1984. Runaway. No, I don't think I've ever seen that. So what you're saying is we'll have to watch that Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. Which we're behind. I mean, it should be Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven, not Five, but it's okay. Yeah. Well, you know, we didn't think about doing it until you got the sale. Until I got the sale, and I got the bug up my butt to watch it. I love my Friday the Thirteenth. It's so terrible. It's so bad. Good. Mike's still reading. Hold on. Here. Yeah. No. He has no, returned. Um. Yeah. Friday the Thirteenth, man. It's so good. So good. I I really liked this 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 last year's, um, was was awesome, dude. Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, the final chapter, so good. So all right, well I guess that's it for all of us here at the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Stay tuned for Ma Hinshaw loses her cookies once again, and see what she thinks of Virus. I'll tell you this, uh, she enjoys it. So, uh, Mike. Are you going to ask me how many reels I give this or? Oh, yes. Yes. Matt, Matt, with, with all of that, how many reels do you give virus uh, 1999? I enjoy it, man. I give it a three and a half all day long. All right, dude. Three and a half. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, Matt, I, I'm going to give uh virus three out of five. I had a good time. Um, it's really cool to see the ship that I, actually have dove in key west so that was neat so what you're saying it's actually a four because you need to bump it up an entire reel just because you've actually been to the ship (laughs) i don't know i don't know now the ship's famous man like now you know like it was in a movie well it was famous before they sunk it (laughs) (laughs) oh i guess so now it's not famous anymore no they they hid their problems in the ocean ah okay all right Gotcha. Okay, I guess I should take us out of the podcast now, since I almost did it, and then I was like, "No, we got to give our reels." Yeah, yeah. What? Why don't you uh, lead us out of here, Matt? Okay, so thanks everyone again for listening to Real Film Nerds Podcast, episode number three hundred and forty-six. Virus. Uh, don't forget to like our social medias that I don't really do much on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, or no, tw- X, formerly Twitter. Uh, and I'm not posting to the stupid Instagram, whatever one. I, it's been so long, I forgot the name of it. Threads. Threads. There you go. That one. I don't post to that one anymore. But uh, don't forget, we have two ongoing contests that are quickly coming to a close. If you want to win a copy of those, you need to listen to the previous two podcasts. But other than that, uh, thanks again, everyone for listening to yet another installment of our podcast. We will chat at you next week. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Hello, everyone. This is Ma Hinshaw Loses her cookies episode 35 virus i think it is a great 
Halloween Horror Fest movie. Hello, Matt. How are you? So you've butchered the name of the Harvest Horror Fest. No. There's no Halloween in it. It's Harvest. Yeah, right. Oops. Okay. Well, it's Halloween coming up, so what the hell? Yes, but this is part of the Real Film Nerds 6th Annual Harvest Horror Horror Fest. Fest. Okay, well, I'll do it over. Okay. I'm not saying you need to do it over. I'm just saying you need to get the name right, you old bat. I know, and I loved when you did it. I, I listened to your podcast, and it was so creepy and everything, but I can't do creepy. Oh, Lord, you need to stop. It was really fun. I loved it. Well, are you going to talk about your movie or not? Are you just going to sit here and talk about my podcast that you don't even listen to because you're a mean old woman? I do, too, listen to it, and I thought it was great. And I Well, you haven't entered any of our contests to win free movies, but you're not allowed because you're my family, so. Well, there you go. See? So there. Anyway. I am sorry that I missed this movie virus when it came out in 1999. Yeah, I I thought it was a good movie. Damn, you might be a crazy old bat, but you have all this stuff down memorized. I'm sitting here looking at a screen to remember this stuff. Well, that's your problem. <laughs> well, I yeah. have two giant screens that are bigger than your TV. Yeah, which I probably could use, but no, no, no. Honestly, Any- that's one thing. If I had the money, I would get you a 75-inch TV so you could oh, see what's no, going on. No, no, that's fine. I'm doing great. Anyway, guys. And this- to make Frank jealous. Yeah, well, that's true. This was a good movie. I'm not saying it's the world's best, but it had some creepy jump start things for me. And jump scares. Back in- well, jump scares. Anyway. Back in the day, I would have thought, oh, this is stupid. This is not going to, you know, fly. But now it's very believable, very believable because uh, of all the robotic uh, things that are going on now. And, uh, okay, yeah, it does. The alien comes down definitely from outer space. But it creates all these uh, creepy, creepy robots. And I think it was really cool because at first you can't figure out what it is. And uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, I'm sitting there going, now what woman knows this much about how to run a tugboat? And then they have to get on the big Russian ship because their ship is their boat is sinking and uh, she knows how to run all that. That kind of blew my mind because I'm like, well, I don't know if Are you she being was... sexist? No, I'm not. I'm are just... you saying all naval naval personnel are seamen? Uh, no, I'm not saying they're all seamen. I'm saying how did she know how to run a Russian one? That was a Russian ship, folks. Why are you so comfortable saying the word seamen, mother? Oh, you know what? Well... I don't know. I'm old. I can say that word. Whatever. You are <laughs> old, yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm so old. I mean, really. Well, anyway. you know it's not a Russian ship, right? Oh, I thought they said it was a Russian ship. Well, it is in the movie, but in real life, it's a U.S. ship. Well, okay. But in the movie, it was a Russian ship. And, and that's Mike's, where I said- Mike's been on it. You're going to have to listen to the Real Film Nerds <laughs> podcast to hear about that. Oh, I will. I will listen. I am excited to listen. That will be very interesting. But I thought it was creepy, creepy because, well, to me, being in the bowels of a ship with no windows and it's metal and it creaks and and you don't know. I guess they knew where they were, but I don't think we did. And it was dark and bleh, and then all these things come out Ugh. i thought it was very scary and i really liked it and hex it you can get it on your television and uh i would highly recommend watching it there did you know that jamie lee curtis says this is the worst movie ever made oh shame on her she lobbied hard to have the director fired or replaced by steve minor 
whom she had made a Halloween H2O in 1998. <gasps> no. However, he wasn't available as he was working on Dawson's Creek. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. Way back then. Right. Well, anyhow, I thought it was good. I mean, her the acting was not the world's most exciting, but it was entertaining. And I thought it was scary until you finally find out everything, which I'm not going to say it because you'll find out when you watch it. Right? So do you think a lot of people are going to watch this 24-year-old movie? Well, they might. I'm trying to get my grandson to watch it because I think it's good. Which grandson? Michael. I think he would like it. You know, and there are great possibilities as far as, yes, you know, a robot could take over things and create stuff. Why couldn't it? You know, if they, if robots can make hamburgers at McDonald's, they could make robot creepy things. Yeah. So I think it, well, poo on her. I thought it was good. Decent movie. Not a five, not a four, but I thought it was a good one, you know. Do you even so, remember what you gave it on the radio? I think I gave it a three and a half. Is that what you give it this time around? Are you sticking with three and a half? I'm sticking with three and a half. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. What did you think of your boy, Donald Sutherland? Oh, he was good. I thought he was very good as the captain. You know, and felt uh, felt bad when he, you know, he wanted to do away with himself and stuff. And then, whoops, changed his mind. But he still, well, I can't tell people what happens. But anyway, yeah. You can I do whatever was, you want. This is your podcast. I tell you that every week. Well, anyway, he croaks. And then just like, you know. Who other, croaks? Little Sutherland. Well, I mean, he kind of croaks. He gets transformed into an, another being. Well, yeah. And then he dies, I guess. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, it's well, only really his head. Yeah, but but to me, that's croaking. Sorry. I mean, you know. If I well, he my... removed his head and put it on a, another person's body slash robotic stuff. Right, right. But then everybody, well. I'm not going to say the end. That would spoil anything if someone actually wants to go watch the movie. Well, Mom is 24 years old. I think you're allowed to spoil it at this point. I think the embargo is well past. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, everybody eventually ends up drowning. They don't drown. And blow up. I mean, it all, you know, blow blow up and drown. Could I say that? I don't know. Anyway. What do you mean by drowning? Excuse me. They were in the water. Because they sink the ship? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Well, I mean, Mom, everybody was pretty much dead except for Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, William Baldwin. Oh, yeah, right. William Baldwin. I forgot his Baldwin. Well, Pardon here's the thing. I don't remember this. I. It's been a while since I've seen this movie, but... I thought the only person that lived through the whole thing was Jamie Lee Curtis. I didn't realize Billy Baldwin lived too. I thought he died. Well, I was kind of disappointed about that, that he lived. I'm like, that was kind of lame. <laughs> you were disappointed you lived. Hey, that made it nice. They were hanging on together oh, as they watched the, you know, everything. Holy anyway, crap. Thought- the Goliath robot was real. I didn't know it was real. I was saying it was CGI and it was terrible CGI, but... That shit was nine feet tall and weighed 4,000 pounds. It was real? It was real, even though it looks really like bad CGI. Yeah. I didn't know. Wow. We. Yeah, that was. That's amazing. Really? Because, yeah, it wasn't CGI back then. I'm sure. Well, no, they had CGI back then. Mom, Terminator 2 was CGI, and that was 1992. Oh, yeah, right. Well, okay. No, but I didn't know that robot the guy was. Wow, that's interesting. Well, thank you for the information. Gosh. It's amazing. Anyway, There's this thing called the Internet. 
Well, I haven't had a whole lot of time to do that. I've had a cold for two days. Jeez. Well, anyway. you should stop making out with weird boys then. Where, where? And no, not boys. And not old men either. I don't know who. Anyway, okay, that is my... Wow, you're so drunk you don't even remember the boys you made out with? Oh, stop that. I didn't. I just got a cold. And, you know, it felt like I was going to croak or something. Ugh. Anyway. Mom, you know you're going to live to be like 130. Oh, no, no, I'm not. Nope. Yep. I thought Sunday was going to be my last day. I was going to say my farewells, but then I couldn't because I kept sneezing. <laughs> oh, gosh. Awful. No, nope, yeah. you're going to live to be at least 110, 115. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Do you really I, think God would be so kind to take you now? No, I don't exactly. think. You're right. you got a point there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway. Well, I, I am finished. That, I hope it's 15 minutes, but I doubt it. I think it's longer. Okay, and so I'm what about next week's Five Nights at Freddy's? Well, uh, I haven't gone to see that yet. I'm going Thursday. Well, are you going to go see it in the theater? Or are you going to watch it on the cock? In the... What? Peacock. It's on. Well, no, that Dave already has tickets for in the movie, and I'm going into the movie and eat some popcorn and drink a soda. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to watch it on Peacock since there's no radio on Friday morning. Oh, there isn't again? Yep. Lisa is out of town again. Oh, my gosh, Lisa. Oh, that's She's going to okay. go see your daughter. Which one? The one in the Canada. One in Okay. Canada. Oh, yeah. Go before the snow hits. <laughs> I don't know if that's what her thinking is, but that's, I'm sure that's a part of it. That's a good point. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you, Matt. And I'm looking forward to going to the movie. And I did go see another movie, which I will not talk about until November. Well, but yes, Mom. Okay, so you can tell people you jumped the gun. Well, go I'm ahead. Sorry. What did you see? The killers, what came out last the, week, last Thursday? The Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay. And that is going to be our next podcast after the Harvest Horror Fest. So are you going to go watch it again or no? I would love to. It's three hours and 45 minutes. I love to. It, time just passed very rapidly. Really? Yes. It was good. Because that's going to be for podcast on November 8th. November 8th. Wow. Yeah. I'll well, see think it. about it, Mom. You're going to see Five Nights at Freddy's, which mm -hmm. is next week, comes out November 1st. Right? What? I thought it came out Thursday. The movie comes out on Thursday, but the podcast comes out November 1st. Oh, okay. Well, that's the day your dad had surgery, so I don't know. Okay. Well, just tell the world, why don't you? Well, anyhow. Uh, well, I'm so glad you're not going to see it again before we record the podcast after November 1st. Right. But honestly, I think I will remember a lot of it, and I have a lot to say about it, which I will not say now. Well, there then I go. guess it's probably good that you went and saw it in the theaters already, because I know you're not going to be able to go to the theater when he's all laid up and not... <laughs> Being yeah. able to drive for a couple of weeks or whatever it is. Right, right. True, true. Yep. So, so anyway, anyway, love you. I'm going to say goodbye to folks because I want to make it 15 minutes and I don't think I did. Well, fine. Then can I end the podcast or are you just going to keep talking? No, you can end the podcast. Jesus, you didn't even wish me happy birthday. How dare you? Uh, oh, but it's your birthday's tomorrow. I can wish it tonight, though. Happy birthday, my wonderful, perfect, awesome, handsome son. Mike at least wished me happy birthday. And I have to remind you, how much do you love me that I have to remind you? You're terrible. You're a terrible mother. I, you did not have to remind me. And your boys better win tomorrow. I know, right. but they won today, which is wonderful. Are you are you gonna get me um uh are you gonna get me um uh World Series tickets for my birthday? Oh good lord. I I was looking at how much they are today. 
How much are they? The three hundreds, which are the nosebleeds. Oh. Guess how much they are per ticket. Oh. Per ticket. I don't know. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Oh my god. And that's for the nosebleeds, your favorite section, the section that makes you feel like you're falling over. Which I cannot handle because I feel like I'm falling through space. And you could afford me. one. I don't need to take you. I'll go by myself. Well, I could afford part of it. I will take it out of my retirement. But <laughs> Your retirement. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple of cents in there. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. well, I am going to end this podcast now. Thank you, okay. everybody, for listening to my Hinshaw Jabber. Uh, my name is Matt uh, Hellspawn of Ma Hinshaw, <laughs> celebrating the day that she wished she would have had me aborted instead. No, I love you. I'm <laughs> glad I had you. You are precious and wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. to not to get too personal, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why my mom and I have such a close connection. I guess you would say is because both of us pretty much almost died on my birthday 42 years ago so that's pretty awesome right very true but hey very we both made it through so it's fine we uh, made it. <laughs> anyways thank you again for listening everyone we have one more to go yes that is now five for our sixth annual harvest horror fest yes we are going to november but it's worth it five nights is at freddy's is a historic video game that they finally made the movie on so hopefully it's good. If not, uh, we'll let you know. So tune in next week. Um, don't forget to follow Ma Hinshaw on X, formerly Twitter, uh, at Graham Graham SV. She wants you to tweet at her and say what's up, and she will not respond because she doesn't know how to use it. Well, at least I found X. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. So uh, don't forget to enter our giveaways. I talked about that at the end of the Real Film Nerds podcast as well. We are not done picking the winners yet, so you still have a chance to win a copy of either of those films. You're going to have to listen to the last two weeks' podcast to figure out what they are. But uh, other than that, thank you for joining us. Again, we will chat with you next week, Five Nights at Freddy's, for episode number 36. Bye.